All right, guys. So we are now into the third section of this how to make feature-based tutorial course. And before we actually get to creating the feature-based track that we're going to be doing in this tutorial course, I thought I'd spend some time just touching on the music theory behind the chords and kind of the structure of the chords in Future Bass because to get that Future Bass sound, you have to be mindful of your chord progressions and how you're voicing your chords. So if you're an absolute beginner and or intermediate person or musician producer, uh, this tutorial, will be, this section of the course will be pretty darn helpful. And if you're more of an advanced user, we're going to touch on some advanced music theory, so maybe you don't you know, maybe your music theory skills aren't the strongest, but your production and programming skills are, you should still find this useful. So with Future Bass, we've already established that it's a groove heavy. It's not four on the floor. It's, it can be anywhere from 80 to 90 beats per minute to 100 beats per minute, all the way up to more of the dubstep trap world of about 140, 150, 160. And that covers a wide range of tempos and BPMs. So it is kind of like some people have asked asked me through various other tutorials I've done, like, well, how do you get that future based sound? And a huge, huge portion of that is just voicing your chords the right way. So I'm going to show this in a few different ways. I do play keys. I wouldn't call myself a piano player or a pianist. Uh, I'm not that good at it. I can play some stuff, but I'm not classically trained uh, in piano. So that's, I feel like that's the case with a lot of producers, DJs, EDM producers as well. A lot of us use the piano roll or the MIDI editor inside our DAW. And what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a technique that uses both of those ideas, both of those elements. I'm going to start some chords on my keyboard. And I have a really basic piano sound, piano sound pulled up in Logic. Okay, so that's what it sounds like. And I am assuming that you guys know what a triad is. You know how to make like a C major triad. Right, C, E, G, and a C minor triad, C, D flat, G. So I'm assuming you guys know how to make those types of triads or those types of tones. Now, if you don't, um, I'm, there's tons of resources on Sonic Academy where you can check that out. But if I got into how to make every chord that we're going to be touching on from scratch, this video would get really long. So we're focusing on how to invert chords for future bass and how to add ninths, seventh, sevenths, ninths, elevenths, suspended chords, all those sort of add chords to make it have that future bass sound. So I have a really basic drum groove pulled up in Machine where I have a kick and snare. And we're going to talk about the drum elements later in the, uh, in the tutorial course. But okay. All right, and we have a percussion loop. Okay, so let's look at this. My tempo is up at 145. It could be, like I said, anywhere from 140 to 160. It could be even slower in the 80s and 90s. That Don't, don't worry about that too much for this video. We'll worry about the chords. So I'm going to show you some chords real quick on a massive synth that I have made. And if you guys are curious where a lot of these sounds are coming from, it's going to be released in a sound set very soon called Flume, F-L-O-O-M, Volume 1. It's, serum, or it's for Serum and Massive. So a lot of the sounds I'm using in this set come from that, but. All right, so there is a chord progression, right? And if I put it back on piano, it sounds like sexy army. And that's the interesting thing to me personally is from a production standpoint with Future Bass is the really heavy influence of R&B. I actually started out in the electronic music world doing uh, R&B and hip hop. So these types of chords are, are fairly, uh, uh, they're kind of at home for me, honestly. So let's break down in the piano roll what's going on with a lot of these chords here. Now, if you don't know what a seventh chord is, don't worry, we'll touch on that in a second. And we're gonna touch on all this as plainly as I possibly can. But this chord progression, if you look at the notes here, it's a C, A sharp, D sharp, G three. 
So we have C, and I'll pull up a piano in a second. C, A sharp, and then D sharp, and then G. Okay, so if you look up here inside of Logic, it'll say what chord I'm playing. So if I go, you see that says C minor seven. So here's a C minor 7, and here's just a C minor. So you can hear that difference, and that difference is key, adding the 7ths and 9ths and even 11ths and suspended chords. So let's talk about the music theory that will help get you there now that you've heard a couple examples briefly. So with a triad, here's how I like to look at it, and we're going to bring up the keyboard here. Make it nice and large for you guys. So here's how I like to think of triads. And I'm more of a mathematical person than I am a music person. Some people might say that's weird, but that's just how I kind of tend to think about it. Okay, so here's C2. Now, if I want to make a major triad coming off of C2, I just know the notes are C, E, and G. I've memorized that. Not that hard to remember that. Well, well let's talk about the mechanics of why this is a, a major chord. The C which is this first note right here, and the G, which is the last note, or the fifth. This just creates what's called a fifth. Now, this isn't minor or major in nature, so this is like a power chord on guitar, and this is not an actual major or minor chord. The same if I play C right here and the C above it. This is called unison. Again, not an actual major or minor. There's no discernible tone making this minor or major. And if I play the one, the five, and the eight, again, Nothing is making this major or minor. So the third, which is the second note in a non-inverted triad, major or minor, is going to differentiate between a major and a minor tone. So let's look at that real quick. So C and G. That's kind of like the structure, the casing, the walls of our chord. If we want to make this major, we're going to add this E. The reason we do that is that third is a major third away from C. And you can just count the steps. One, two, three, four. So count it like a board game. Don't count the step that you're on. So if we start on C and we want to make a major chord, go one, two, three, four steps away. And now we have a major chord. So let's change notes here and use the same thing. It's four notes away for the first for the first note after your first tonic. This is called the tonic or root. So four steps. One, two, three. And then the, th the fifth, you can just remember as being a fifth away, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps away from your tonic. So let's go to like a black key, a key that people don't use often. Let's go to G sharp, okay? So if I want to make a fifth away from this to kind of make my container, I need to count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I play a G sharp and a D sharp and look up here, I'm now playing a G sharp five or an a flat five, depending on how Logic wants to spit it out. Okay, now let's say I want to make this a major chord. Well, what am I going to do? Well, here's our tonic, here's our fifth. Remember I just said, if you want to make it a major chord, go four steps away from your, your tonic note, your root note, in a non-inverted non chord. And that step that you land on, that will be your major third. So one, two, three, four. So if I play a C with this, we now have a major chord. So let me go up an octave higher. Right, it sounds happy. We've made a major chord, a major triad in root position. Let's go back to C for now. So we have C. Now how do you make it a minor chord? Well, all you have to do to make it a minor triad in root position is take that, that note, the third, which is the major third away from our tonic, or our root note, which is with C. All I have to do is take that down a half step. So it was E, now we're moving it down a half step, which is one key. Literally one whole, just not a whole step, not like a white to a white, we're going white to a black, or sometimes it'll be black to white, or even white to white. So C major, C minor. Now this minor third is a, is just three steps away from your tonic. So if we count, one, two, three. So your steps from C is one, two, three. That makes the minor triad. Now you're, the seventh, or the, the I mean, the, the note that's seven steps away, which is the fifth from your tonic, that always remains the same 
in root position. So let's go back to that that uh, A flat major, that G sharp major that we made. Right now, to make this minor, I'm going to drop this third, which is four steps away, to be three steps away, so which is one note. And now we have a minor chord, G sharp minor, or A flat minor. Okay, so that's how you create really. Ba that's how I like to look at making chords. And the reason I like doing that, that's the, the reason I like thinking of it that way, is because if I'm playing in a key that I'm not comfortable in and I need to do a, a genre that I'm not super good at, or maybe not, I shouldn't use the term good at, I haven't done a lot, I'm going to uh, venture into the piano roll or the MIDI editor in my DAW, whether it's, it's Logic Pro Tools, and I know a lot of you guys use Live, you all have the same editing capabilities. But just learning how to play the basic triads, I think that's really cool because it allows you, that's kind of what I'll do, is I'll, I won't always write for future bass. I won't always write in the seventh chords and the ninths and all the weird inversions as I'm actually writing the chord progression. I may just play basic chords like minor triads and major triads, how I'm comfortable playing them. Okay, so let's look at how we can add a seventh on top of these C chords. Okay, so let's go down to here. There's a C major triad, and if I play a C above it, it's still a C. It's just not a triad anymore because there's four notes. But if I add, if I, so if, remember I talked about how if you play C2 to C3, that's an octave. It's called a unison. Okay. Now if we throw, if we throw in the third and the fifth, we now, the ear will hear a C major. What about these other notes? So in the key of C, all the white keys are fair game. So I just can't hit any black keys. What happens if I add in this, uh, this D right here? Okay, that's a C add nine. Okay, what happens if I add in B? C major seven. What happens if I add in this A? It's a C six. See that up here. What happens if I add in this F? Okay, those all make chords. And the reason I'm showing you the key of C is again, all of the notes are white keys, so you really can't screw that up. So let's go to A minor, okay? Because A minor is the uh, is the basically the inverse minor key to C major, because it's the sixth away from from C. It's the minor six from C. So in this key, in A minor, all white keys are fair game. So if I'm playing an A minor chord, right, we have the A minor triad right here. This is our tonic, then one, two, three steps away, there's our minor third, and then seven steps away from our tonic, whoa, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have this E, A minor. Now what happens, again, this is A minor, so all the white keys are fair game. I can't hit one of these, because it's going to make a really weird, weird tone, because that would be out of the key. Now, what happens if I add this G? Okay, that's a minor seventh chord. So now, we ha now we're playing A minor seventh. Okay, now that's a hugely popular chord for future bass. All right, so now I'm playing an A minor seven, but it looks a lot different from the A minor seven that we were just playing. Let's talk about that next. So the, the seventh chord, whether it's major or minor, is a very big part of future bass. Now with the A minor seventh chord, all you're doing is sticking, you're extending the chord, you're sticking the seventh of the scale on top of the note. What I mean by that is if we, if we do our A minor scale, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is this G. So if I play an A minor chord and then put this G which is the seventh note in the scale above it, we have an A minor seventh chord. Okay, now that's how you make seventh chords, is you literally just play the seventh of the scale. Now, if you're not a scale person and you don't know scales, that's okay. All you have to do is play your triad and then play one, two, three steps away from your last note in your triad. So let's try this with a different chord. Let's try doing it on E minor. So here, let's do it down here though. 
So here's my E minor. Here's my tonic. Here's my fifth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps away. I know that's a fifth. And if I throw in a, a note that's four steps away, or three steps away from my tonic, which is E, I'll get a minor chord. One, two, three, which is G. Okay, so now if we play, even if you don't know your scale, doesn't matter because in this scale, for instance, E minor has black keys. So you might be like, is it that key or is it that key for the seventh, if you're trying to make an uh, E minor seventh chord. You don't have to know the scales. You should learn your scales. It makes this a lot easier. But with modern technology in DAWs, you don't really have to. So here's an E minor seven, or here, here's an E minor chord. Let me now do that thing I just said, where I said if you go three steps above your last note in your triad, you will get a minor seventh chord. So here's our last note in our triad, and we go one, two, three. So if I play a D above my E minor triad, this should, in theory, be an E minor seven. And it is. All right, so you get the idea. That is how you can create minor seventh chords anywhere on your piano. Let's make a uh, let's make a C minor seventh chord. All right, so here's a C minor triad. If I go three steps above my last note, my triad one, two, three, which would be B. I'm sorry, this, this, uh, this A flat, that's a minor seventh chord. All right, so there is a C minor seventh, and that's how you can create a seventh stack. Now, to create a ninth stack, it's the same thing exact same process except you're going to add the ninth of your scale above it or if you're doing that counting up that I told you about you're going to count up you're going to count up higher in the scale to the ninth of your your scale which is actually just the note right before your tonic so for instance in a minor let's say let's say I wanted to make an a minor add ninth here is the a scale a minor starts on a so the ninth of that would be one note above my tonic, which would be B. Right? Now, a ninth chord in isolation doesn't sound that cool. But I think an add ninth sounds great. So here's an A minor seventh ninth chord. There's A minor, and then A minor add nine, and then A minor seventh add nine. All right, so if you're noticing, like if you're going, holy hell, these chords, there's a lot of notes in these chords. Well, you're right. That is kind of what makes future bass, future bass. It's chords that have a lot more stacks than your typical EDM chord. So there's a general look at how you can make sevenths and ninth seventh and ninth chords, whether major or minor, inside uh, your DAW, whether you're using live, logic, whatever. I used a little bit of music theory, a little bit of just n numeric counting. So for either people out there, whichever one you tend to lean towards, music theory or maybe your more mathematical piano roll, MIDI roll guy, this should work. Now we're going to break from this video. In the next video, we're going to start to discuss some inversions for future bass. I'll see you guys there.